Jadi susu mau ya sefrak Oh iya mohon Mani ya Oke kau berapa tadi Ah iya lah <clears throat> um yeah we met in in 2013 i think it was um around october towards the end of the year uh we were still in a church where we were highly involved and um we had a bus trip to malawi to have a crusade for a couple of days and then came back to south africa so that's actually when our whole story started um I was still very scared um, of actually believing that this can be true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually um, on the way to Malawi. A lot of people thought I'm not going to make it on the bus <laughs> or something. <laughs> so everyone was checking up on me the whole time. And then when we got there, it's actually very interesting. I, I kind of had this way of just wanting to make sure he's fine the whole time because he got sick and no one there had any medicine except me and um so i doctored him <laughs> <laughs> and then his voice went away and i helped him with that and then i had sinuses every, yeah every now and then we would just like stare at each other and yeah and then on the way back on the bus I wanted to actually just go to the loo and it was occupied and I went to sit next to him and he looks at me and he's like, no, you mm. can't sit here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, why? He's like, no, you're way too beautiful to sit next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I think what happened was we were just on our way um past Mozambique into Zimbabwe and she just wanted to go to the loo and I was sitting literally two seats in front of the uh, the loo door and um, yeah she sat there and she forgot to pee <laughs> <laughs> it was 15 hours later yeah. we got to South Africa and yeah and that's when we actually started um, <laughs> yeah I, I surprised him like every afternoon with either McDonald's or um, a cake for my grandmother or something then I would just like phone him and like listen so I'm on campus so where are you now and I kind of did that every day that <laughs> was quite interesting and um, I couldn't stay away mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I think um, the, the most interesting part of this whole thing was uh, well, when I got to, um, to to South Africa and everything and started settling back into my daily routines and so on, I sent her a text and said to her, listen, I don't think it's a good idea <laughs> that we should continue seeing each other. Or being friends. Or being, being friends or whatever, yeah. because I was still um, holier than thou type of <laughs> uh, attitude. And... Um, and she said, "Ah, man, it's fine. Don't don't worry about it." And I, every guy, every uh, a black guy, <laughs> almost every black guy knows this. If you get any some sort of any any energy um, from a very beautiful woman, you try to play the culprit as much as you can, <laughs> so that um, you actually milk out the, <laughs> the attention that you actually want. Yeah. And yeah, that's actually how we met during varsity times. And she was already working and I was still a student and going to classes and so on. And that's actually when everything started. Yeah, so we had our courtship in that time. And yeah, he still phoned me and said to me, listen, so I'm kind of in love now. So, and this is not going to work. And I'm like, Okay, and I went home and I'm like, listen, but yeah, I can't stay away from this guy. <laughs> and I was like addicted to him. And um, then someone said to me, but why don't you just give it a chance? 
and see what happens. And I'm like, you know, my dad's going to kill me. My grandfather's are going to kill me. And she's like, but you're always going to wonder. And if you don't give it a chance, if you get, give it a chance, you at least can say you tried. And we gave it a chance and he asked me to be his girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> in a, by a very funny way. <laughs> and um, yeah, oh, that, I, I think just think said that's yes. It started, and yeah. Then, yeah, we just went from there. No. No. Oh, I, I, I actually had a high school Sweet. fling type of thing in high school. Um, but after varsity, or after school, I never had someone specifically to say, because after school I was straight involved in the church that we used to be in, and I was at the varsity, so my times were actually um, split into three. So it was the church, class, and then rugby. So that was the whole time after school, that routine. And then two years later on, that's when actually everything happened. Mm. No, I didn't have someone before. Yeah, yeah I think the one that is uh, that I'm most profound about is the mere fact that you are involved in a church, um, and the moment that you have to disclose the fact that you date or you want to date this woman, um, that your leader doesn't want to accept it. And every time you have to kind of maneuver your way around denying your own feelings in regards to what you feel to you, um, this particular individual, um, just to accommodate your position in the church or whatever, because you were in a, in a good setup. I mean, you were involved and you were feeling part of the, the whole ministry and everything. And um, it's actually a joke how it happened. Um, we we kind of split eight times <laughs> in the whole setup. No, but it wasn't it was a normal normal relationship fights. It was mm. it was because of racial stuff, family stuff, um, and then yeah, it was the church. Yeah, so I think actually the the, the for example, my nice father actually didn't wanna wanna meet me. Um, until a miracle happened and I'm literally going to say it's a miracle because I don't know how it actually happened but before then it was always a time of how do people see you it, it, it has been a big challenge for us just for the mere fact that you're thinking what is that person thinking mm -hmm. if he sees us in a relationship or sees us holding hands has been mm -hmm. it was actually one of the biggest thing that we had to overcome um, in the beginning phases of our relationship together. Yeah. Yeah, and especially like even just going to the spur, you're like, where can you sit where people want to go? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was very challenging to be together just because other people didn't want us to be together mm -hmm. and also because um, of the society the the stigma around dating as black and white people so um mm. yeah it was quite difficult for me but every time we just kind of found our way back to each other it's just like and it's not weeks or months it's like yeah. a few hours <laughs> every time and then he phones me and he's like but I like you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, either I climb over gates and break down <laughs> yeah. the door. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we always, we couldn't just be without each other. <laughs> we broke a lot of rules. Yeah. A lot. So now since it's a, it's, it's a, a thing of the difficulties that we had to face, I mean, in the morning I would say good morning, how did you sleep? Um, I miss you and whatever. And around 10, I will be to maybe doing something at the church or whatever. 12 o'clock, I'll leave her. And I say to her, listen, this is not happening. I don't want you anymore. <laughs> this is, someone. yeah, th <laughs> yeah, this is not, this is not real. Um, 
And then... Six o'clock, he phones Yeah, six o'clock, I, I start phoning and say, listen, man, um, what, what happened today? What, what was wrong? And so on. And uh, I think th those are actually the stuff to think about it that actually made made this relationship even exist. It, it, it's those small things that... And I think the fact that... Um, not to kind of say anything about me, but um, it's it's a choice you have to make. Um, even going through difficult things, um, having those challenges, and you have to make the decision, especially me, because for him, he can go on with his life. But for me, it was a thing of, I don't know how to state it actually, but it's a choice I made that I want to be with him. Mm. It's not, um, it's I not decided, I decided that I'm not going to care about what if anyone says or thinks or does or whatever, because I want to be with this person. And even though he didn't always <laughs> want to be with me, Every time I would say, okay, no, it's fine. Let's just try again. Because I didn't blame him for the fact that he felt that way because I knew he was influenced by someone. And um, um, I kind of waited yeah, for let me just, to realize. Yeah, let me just add. <laughs> yeah. well, um, the I'll edit as well. <laughs> um, so I don't think it was actually uh, uh, for her, it was a thing of a conscious decision that she made mm -hmm. to say, listen, this is how I feel about this person and this is what I want us to have um, for the rest of our lives and I don't care who says what in any mm -hmm. kind of way, this is, this is what I choose. Whereby with me it was more of a... Um, affirmation type of thing that I was always after. Um, I just always wanted to have that confirmation from someone to say, "Listen, it's okay. It's okay. It's it's it's, it's okay if you actually want to do it. You can just run with it and so on." Um, because in a way, unfortunately, that's how maybe the society has conditioned or people to believe. But as a you, you, you tend to feel inferior um, in a way um, thinking that you have to do things twice as hard just to feel accepted or whatever the case may be and I think that's where the challenge for me specifically came whereby when she made a decision in the very start and said this is what I want it was, it was actually done by then but I actually had to work myself through the, the whole process mm -hmm. to get my mind to a place where I say listen I don't have to hear it from someone to say it's okay to have a black woman or a white guy or um, a white woman or a black guy or, or vice versa. It's, 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 if, if it is something that you want, you can just go for it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the decision that actually helped me to, to get to a place where I am today. Um, it's just that thing of not just accepting someone to give you that confirmation of saying, listen, this is the correct thing to do. Mm. So on. Yeah. Mm. Um, for me, and I actually don't want to say it in front of her, um, is going with her somewhere. Um, people, um, people just are cruel. And, um, oh, excuse me, baby. <laughs> Excuse me, Lali. Will you not have TV? Will you not have TV? Okay, can you look? Slow booty. Um, yeah, well, um, for me, my biggest thing is going with um, my daughter somewhere. Um, because people are just cruel. <laughs> for some reason, it's just frowned upon. It's just even though she's the most beautiful girl in the world to me and to many people, it's just the first thing they see. A lot of people f first ask me, um, so where did you adopt her from? 
and um, I have said a few rude things to some people, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's really hard. But when we're together and we go together with the kids, it's much easier. Um, I think people are like, oh, okay, makes sense, cool, okay. But um, if I go alone with them, it's it's really hard for me. Um, it's hard for me that people. She's just a child. Um, doesn't matter what color she is or what her hair looks like or whatever. Um, people just have this way of looking at you and just assuming stuff. And that I think that hurts sometimes because I don't want her to feel that way. Um, yeah, that's one thing for me. Um, well, yeah, for me, yeah, let me just actually say for me, actually, it's um, coming from a, a, a Zulu background, if I can call it that, um, even though my habits are more on the Sutu side because of my mother, but there is still that thing in you that is Zulu to say you want to take pride in whatever you do. Um, one of the most difficult thing for me that I find challenging for my relationship or my marriage is is the cultural thing um, mm. that you constantly have to um, sacrifice that which you grew up with. Um, that one is the one of the thing that if you don't make that conscious decision as soon as possible it will haunt you because there's certain things that you want to do that you grew up with that is actually the frame of your world and in order for your relationship with your wife to work um, yourself something in you has to die and that's actually the most painful thing that I get to experience in, in my marriage but the nice thing about it is I actually sat down with myself and said listen I'm willing to do it and that's actually what makes it more more fun than anything else is to say I made a conscious decision to say I want to be with this person and I'm willing to sacrifice it at any given moment mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the most difficult thing or challenging thing yeah. um, for example we I grew up you know obviously my mom and dad were, were still married um, when if my dad if my dad said, I'm going somewhere, it was never a question of where you're going, what time are you going to be there, why are you going there, with whom are you going there. Uh, you can name all the questions, whereby with an Afrikaans woman, <laughs> uh, she will crush you with that one. She will ask all the questions that are necessary because... Um, with, with 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 our culture and specifically how I was brought up is the woman has to be um, humbling like she has to be respectful in a way that she um, yes, we'll cut this out man, but I don't want to say submissive but she's more we we okay I want to I want, I want to show him that I'm a shompa in a way, in sort of way, and some people don't understand it. But in 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 Afrikaans culture, you'll never get that around the corner. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to actually go the extra mile to find it, and I think that would, that's one of the examples that I can mention. Yeah, I think it, I think it's difficult to to remember that, um, and even though. I can try, but I still feel like, but it's because I care for you. And so it's not, um, it's never been a thing of owning him or, um, because it's something we've spoken about a lot is that um, when a black person walks into a room full of white people, they immediately feel inferior and it 
takes a lot of work in our house to not do that where we are equal where it it's become easier for me to say listen i don't see you as a black person but for him to know that and to kind of click in his head i think for us that's something that we struggle with a lot no i think that's like the second challenge <laughs> that that yeah, it's but it's actually it's, it's actually it's interesting actually to to see for me it's very interesting to understand how the culture minds are different um, because I don't understand always maybe why he feels a certain way but then after a while of talking and really really going into it and trying to figure it out understanding i love talking to other black people as well about stuff like that and then they they can also explain their part for me because he struggles to put st- certain stuff in words um so but then then it kind of kicks in your head and um because of this yeah <laughs> um and then it clicks in my head and then you become aware of it. And you have to be aware of stuff like that because you don't want your husband to feel inferior in his own house. Um, he's the man, he's the, he's the provider, he's the um, father, he's everything in the house. But so. I should also say um, is the way that she's saying it, it, it sounds it sounds good <laughs> but um, no, it's hard. to to work for it it, it, it takes a lot of work yeah. and it's not a a, a, a a question of um I'll make you the man it's it's not like something that happens automatically because the whole time she must make me believe that I'm actually the man of the house whereby on my side is how is that even possible? I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're freaking white but or whatever. But in a way, it, it, it makes me... I must it, say, it, I think... Can I get a pint of my water? I'm not going to drink my water, but... I'm not going to drink my water. 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 Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. You can make it. You know, th- those are the type of stuff. No, you just want that extra, just to. But that's what makes me. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, next question. Guys. <laughs> that's just a practical. No, I want to add something. Yeah, but we have to. <laughs> okay. So the the um. <laughs> the thing for me is is that um. When family gets involved um, in a marriage um, that's um, I think sorry. the biggest sorry yeah 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 that's it that's it that's it no it's not 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 it's Okay, yeah. Okay, um, actually, I, I, yeah, I won't go into di- detail, but I'll just explain overall. So, when it's just me and him and the kids, or just me and him, um, everything's fine. Everything's good. The moment anyone comes either into our house or phones, it's like something gets loose. Because... Um, Yeah, let me let, let me let me try and 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 make it more practical, and you will just add on okay. to what I'm trying to to say is, it it's it's a one thing to to try and get your house in order, um, um, but it's another thing to make your community be in order, and you can talk about the racial issues together at any given moment because you always know that you are honest with each other. Mm. But the problem comes in with the extended family 
Um, it's, 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 it's actually one of the biggest challenges. Um, uh, uh, forgetting about the community, forgetting about the people outside that are walking in the malls and everything. It's, it's actually that family, extended family setup. It is mm. something that, that you can't define. Yeah, like because for her to say, okay, I'm with you and whatever happens, I will run with you and I believe that this that we have is meant to be. But to actually convince it to the extended family in a way that they should understand, Kuti, this is what we believe and stand for, mm. Mm. It, it, it's crazy. It, it, yeah. It's crazy. It, 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 it is something that that you, you, you can't explain it in, in one day. Mm. Because the moment you try to be as honest as you can, you realize that this person forces you to compromise. Mm. But you do realize in your relationship that honesty is, or the truth is actually what keeps it going. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, is that, that once you let family say they say, they hurt. And the thing is, they don't understand the way we have a way of speaking to each other in a respectful manner where I respect his culture and where he grew up in. He does the same with me, but they can't do it with him. So, um, especially from my family's point of view, um, I mean, I cannot tell my uncle you're not allowed to make a joke about black people because they don't feel... I don't think it's a fact that they don't feel he's black. I think just he's immune to feelings of the fact that he's actually black. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? <laughs> it's actually, like That's actually a very good point. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's almost like, oh, he'll understand, you know? He's like, oh, no, man, Cakes, we're not talking about you. Um, we, we're just talking in general. You, you, we, you're fine, you're fine. You're fine, you're fine, but um, the rest of them, the rest of them. And, <laughs> yeah, it, it's hard. It's hard to try and explain to them, listen, try not to do this. Because it's not a fact of um, changing who you are because of my husband. It's just respecting someone else's culture in a way that doesn't hurt them. And um, yeah, it's just something that I taught myself from a very young age not to do. But for some or other reason, the rest of my family especially, it's really hard. They, they just say what they want to say without thinking. They... Um, do certain things that I'm used to but he's like listen that's not normal for a family member to do that um, you know that that's that's a big thing for us as well because my family I literally had to put in boundaries at certain areas in our between especially parents and I'm like listen <laughs> you can't do this you can't say this you can't just do whatever you want in my house. I mean, you have to respect him. You have to. And the thing is, because, and I'm going to say it and it's going to maybe hurt. Nia. But, no, no, no. Nia, 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 Nia. It's easier. Nia, but no, listen to me. No. And this is what she, Nia, she gets in the moment. Nia, 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 Nia. You're going to stay still. Can I get this? Nia, you're going to stay still. You're still going to get the opportunity to say your say. <laughs> But you better be careful when you say it. Um, there's actually two stuff that I want to mention. Whereby um, the first one is whatever we're saying here, and I should be clear about it, is, is we, we, we would like to believe that we have got to a point where we are willing to pay the price for whatever we say. Um, because we, we do know that sometimes to say something costs, costs, costs you something. Um, the second one is, is not to say that I'm emotional, I'm, I'm more, or black people are more emotional, spiritual kind of thing than white people, or 
black people um, express their emotions differently than white people or whatever. But you see, if, if, if you haven't been, if you haven't felt pain of being black, if you haven't felt pain of being inferior, if you haven't felt it that you have to prove yourself for someone to hear you at least, then you won't understand what the repercussions are for what you are saying. And that's the, the biggest thing that I, that I get to experience, which is also frustrating, but also challenging in a way to say, besides me being able to say, listen, you're not superior than me. I'm also a human being. But the fact that you have experienced so much pain before, and I mean it in a way that is doesn't matter whether you are born talented or born rich or born poor or born whatever, but um, what has happened in our past, we actually have that on our hands. And that's the, the thing that people tend to forget, to say, doesn't matter in which culture or race or whatever you are in, but what the past has done causes you to think twice before you do something because you have the responsibility to turn it to the left or to the right. And the big thing is, it's like if, if you are used to being inferior, then pain starts becoming normal for you and the thing that you have to fight it because pain doesn't have to be normal. And that's what I, I mean by saying, um, if you're gonna say it's gonna hurt, because she knows how our relationship is with each other. She can say certain stuff because we, we in a way have agreed on, on a mutual understanding of saying, listen, stop eating like a black man. <laughs> or yes, my yes, a vet frog, you know, stuff like that. Um, but she, she, she knows what her limits are, mm. even though uh, cognitively she's been conditioned to react in certain ways. But it, it takes time mm. to, 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 to say, listen, I'm not a racist, or Listen, I don't like black people. Listen, I don't like white people. Mm. So, um, the thing that I wanted to point out with family is that um, I think if he've, he has been white, a lot of family members would have submitted much easier. But because he is black and it hurt so much to actually say it out loud that they don't know how to do that. Yeah, it's, up, it's abnormal. It's abnormal. It's, 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 you, you can't. You can't just... You, you, you can't just... Just go... go and I'm careful to say You can't just go... You can bend your knee mm. to, a, to a black man. And it 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 it, and it might so sound it might sound like something simple, but before you talk about any other thing culturally or our past or whatever, mm. I think that's the one thing that you need to understand before you can make any Decisions. profound statements in regards to any. Um, racial thing mm. is, is, is you must understand it's, it's, up, it's abnormal it's, it doesn't matter how good I try to behave doesn't matter how good you <laughs> and I'm not going to say I because I have my own relationship with my wife and it might be different to the second people that are interracial or so on but for me mm. is there certain things that that you have to look it in the eye the whole time and making sure that you get at least that 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 little bit of 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 respect yeah. that little bit of of recognition of who you actually are mm -hmm. besides the <coughs> color of your skin 
Mm. Well, besides that, and that's the fight that you, that that makes it. And I think it, it, it's difficult because um, this is not just a physical um, problem, but a spiritual problem. And um, the devil literally tries so many times to bring division to bring that thing of I'm better you're worse that thing it continues coming back the whole time so it's not something that you fight once and you win it's something you fight all the time it's like being in battle every day choosing I will submit to him because he's the husband of the house and choosing to say no to your family because they do not respect him um, must have been one of the biggest things for me because I am a person that respect my family and um, but I did realize I think a little bit more than a year ago that it is unacceptable for someone to come into his house and change everything literally spiritually um, and make him feel inferior in his own house um, yeah so um, I think we we are good with that one so <laughs> can I ask the next question um, yeah it's okay it's, yeah that's the thing I wanted to explain yeah so uh, the reason why I uh, I'm, I'm stopping her is because you know it, it can easily become a one dimensional thing mm. um, because um, I can hear by the way she goes now um, it, it's out of frustration that she gets to experience but on the other hand it, it, it is a I would say um, it's not something that I will be proud of but besides the way that her family does it because this is 10 out of 10 times this is how the conversation goes is the black man becomes the victim in a way and I mean you, you, you could hear how the conversation has been going um, because it's like her family does this, her family does this, her family does this but you see, in, in, in my instance, um, it's a decision that I took very early in my marriage to say that I'm not going to make my family much involved in our relationship um, because the moment family becomes too involved in this type of a relationship, it's always going to be a question of opinions and what's right and what's wrong mm -hmm. and how do you allow that and so on. For example, um, in a year's time, my own family will visit me two times or three times. And it is a, quite a frustrating thing because they, I mean, if you walk into my house, whenever my wife is not around, it's like someone can breathe. Do you understand? <laughs> and it, it is something that, that is, it, it irritates because you're trying to condition your wife to say, listen, you're not superior. But then on the other hand, you have to condition your own family, extended family, to say, you're not inferior. And that is something that, that you can easily fall into, to say, but these type of people are saying this, or they're doing this, or do, doing that. But, but sometimes it is, the, it, it is our own behavior. And when I'm very careful when I say behavior because I'm not saying a behavior that is out of hand. I mean it like your, your habits, mm -hmm. what you tend to do the moment you find yourself in a space of a white person or whatever, mm -hmm. is how you react. That the moment you see a white man, it's like you, you want to, well, for some people, they, they don't feel that at all because they, they might be full of hate or might be full of resentment or whatever you might call it, but for majority of the people, in, in especially in our country, um, the moment they see a white man, it, it's like it's an automatic switch that you get mm. 
to say this person is always right, whatever he says, and this person has a better way forward because this is what we've actually been taught in a way. And yeah, I just wanted to raise that point. And I'm going to talk about the drug we can go yeah, well, um, in, in regards to the limitations that you have to put in, 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 in regards to how you implement it in your own family, is I realize it, 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 the margin of error is so small mm. that you never know what you are busy with until you find yourself in a situation where you realize, listen, if I at least kept my culture a bit, mm. this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Whereby, if you keep your culture tightly, you're busy losing your wife. For example, not literally losing, but you, 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 you're not clicking into one another. And that is why it is... It, it, it is a, a constant thing. You cannot say, no, you figured it out. Mm-mm. Because every time I have to realize how far do I push my culture and how far do I pull away from my culture. Yeah. But I cannot say, in a sense, I have completely erased my culture from this whole marriage. I, 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 I can't say that. And I can't say that, that I'm implementing every aspect of my culture for example um the whole way we speak to each other in the household the way we respect each other the way um we 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 treat each other on a day-to-day basis for example i mean i'm 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 old enough now to say i haven't seen my dad make tea for my mother (laughs) <laughs> that that is something that it, it still it still doesn't make sense to me till this very day. But I realized that it is something where the first time I went to go visit her at her home after he, her dad accepted me, the dad made us coffee. So he made the wife the coffee, he made me coffee, he made her coffee, <laughs> he made everyone coffee and it doesn't make sense and that is why I say with the culture is you have to know how to balance it on a continuous basis and yeah. Um, all I can add to that is that it's very important, it's not a balance thing because, oh, no, I'm wrong when I say it's not a balance thing, it's totally a balance thing. But <laughs> yeah, totally. uh, this is my wife, <laughs> <laughs> it's my friend, you know, but yeah. <laughs> So, (laughs) it's just the thing of you not pulling away from your culture. I'm not patriotic at all. Um, I've never had anything where I feel I'm white, you better listen to me. You know, that being like that. Um, But (laughs) you, you kind of, we have ways of doing things like going hunting or <laughs> which is experienced finally um, and <laughs> the the traditions of, of that as well but also um, I have opened up myself a lot to his culture because I just love certain things that they do um, like recently I have learned um, when someone passes away yeah when someone passes away not not just them being there for me but just the whole tradition thing around it because um, his mother is such a darling and a sweetheart that um, she never um, lets us me and the children eat from the um, cow meat because she says there was too many um rituals done with the cow so she doesn't want to expose us to that or she doesn't take us to the graveyard um, things like that and um, recently they went with me to support me for someone that I lost and um, 
they asked me, do you want to go to the grave? And I'm like, yes, I really do want to because I want to just, because that's kind of the way you just say goodbye. And, and um, she supported me. She was there. She was behind me. She was backing me the whole time. And um, there's a lot of traditional stuff that I would love my children to understand um, because it al almost makes you understand the way that he thinks as well. Um, but it's not easy, especially I think for him being away from his family where a lot of his culture has been taken away from him because he has stepped into my culture um, so we kind of do everything with my family or we do stuff with a lot of white people and um, so we don't really do a lot of stuff that they do we we do much more stuff that uh, where we do a lot of stuff together Harry next question please <laughs> yeah no it it, 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 it doesn't Fish me off because you know, you know when you, when you, when you've said to yourself many times, yeah, man, what about your family's culture? What about a, 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 a chesanyama where we just chill and let's say drink a a, 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 a Jameson or whatever? Um, you know, she knows exactly how it is whenever we are together, and. I, I don't get that a lot mm. because it's part of the price that I said I'm willing to pay because I love I love her um, and as she mentions that you know it it starts repeating itself to say listen it is the truth because I, 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 I never knew that she realized that <laughs> but it is something that yeah that you, you get too long to because I realize if we were staying in in a different location than now, um, maybe my marriage might have been different. Mm. But I chose to say, listen, I love where I am now and I want to stay here mm. for as much as possible so I'm willing to make the sacrifices. And that's where I say with the culture, it can be pulled back or so on. Yeah. And the thing, the thing is, it's, it's important for someone who um, is deciding to maybe get married into a mixed relationship where <laughs> if you don't like the way they eat or the way they speak or anything like that then you shouldn't get involved with that because the moment um, you um, you go to the family and I mean you get a lot of different types of people there. I mean, his family, a lot of people are very educated, but there are also people that are uneducated. And um, it's important for me to still treat them all the same. You, you can't go there and um, pull, your nose. pull your nose up. And for a very long time, his mother allowed me to do that. She... Um, Literally, I mean, in Pietrastein, for instance, there's never water. Never. Like, <laughs> never. So, she literally, every, every day, at a certain time, she knows what time I love to bath. She would run a bath for me and literally boil the water for me to get the bath um, hot for me and the kids. She did that every day when we visited. And for a long time, I kind of expected it. I expected to get there and the house is clean and um, the bed is ready and everything. And then one day we got there and everything, she wasn't there yet. Um, she was still on her way to Petrestein from where she was working. And um, things wasn't set up. And I've, I had two choices. Either I could have said, listen, this is not up to standard. Um, you guys need to get the house ready. What, what, what? I mean, I'm here. Or 
what I did was I said to the girls, listen guys, let's grab the brooms, let's quickly clean before your mother comes home, let's do the beds, everything fine. Um, can we go to the shop quickly so that we can get some food? So you, you've, you get a place where you kind of um, start respecting her because it is her house. And where I kind of decided, you know what, I don't need to be treated like royalty there. I'm part of the family. So what I started doing, and I don't know if you realized it, but I don't want her to run a bath for me anymore. I'll use a vascom. It's easier. And I want my kids to know that because I don't want them to be brats. Because I think knowing where people come from and understanding where they come from helps you to understand the person and to treat them in a better way. So I think yeah, that's, that's a big thing for me when it comes to culture. The, the thing is you can't, you can't raise kids with a mingle moose. You have to raise them with a plan. You have to have a set plan. And um, I think I'm going to be honest if I say we haven't really figured anything out yet. Um, yeah, we, no. We've got a way of disciplining them, but we don't always agree. Yeah, look, it, 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 it's something that you, you can't just um, save or really figure it out. Because, mm. I mean, and someone else might say, but dude, what's wrong with you? Um, you were supposed to figure this out the day you got married. But you see, um, and it also works the same in a business setup. If you start a new business or you open a, a spaza shop, whatever the cause might be, is is you have to get systems ready. Mm-hmm. System builds cultures. That's 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 the only way how it works. And it's it's easy to say, I just build a, a mutual culture or just mm-hmm. make a mango moose or whatever. But if you haven't figured out the system yet, mm-hmm. um, then you should forget about any culture that you're going to build. So and so we haven't got a system um, that is already in place to say, this is how the kids are, this is how they should be, this is how they should behave or whatever. But at this point, we try to build up habits with them, mm-hmm. um, habits of respect, habits of um, honoring elderly people and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, how you eat on a table or so on, but you can't, you can't say you, you, you can give them something that is unique because what is unique for her is different for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, totally. it's gonna be like that, but we can agree to a certain system that we want to implement, mm-hmm. um, where we teach them to not do things that annoy us. Yeah. That's a simple way to we can um, get a, a, a system that's going to be a culture eventually. Yeah, you I know. think it's, it's um, because we don't really have any role models that can like guide you um, where if you are a black couple in a black family and a white couple in a white couple, uh, a white family, you, you can go to your parents and you're like, listen, I'm struggling with this. Um, he doesn't listen to me or what can I do or do you have any ideas and you can kind of ramble it together and um, with us we don't have anyone where who actually is open-minded enough to actually say listen but let me help you try this Um, like my dad will give one advice but my mother would give something totally different his mother would say would say don't hit him um, <laughs> someone else would maybe say no man he just needs a good hiding or whatever so it's really it's really difficult because it's actually something that we you literally need to sit and you're like first you need to look at the child itself um, what type of personality they have and then you have to also remember that the um, example you set for them impacts them and um, I think that's one thing that um, I tell a lot of people before they have kids like before 
you even think of having children, you have to understand that that child is your responsibility. The way the person that he or she is going to be one day is because of you. And um, I've learned that through my own experience. And it's so important how you impact them. So you can't just bring in a culture or bring in one thing here, one thing there, one thing there. Because, I mean, you've heard Meghan Markle speak. It's Meghan Markle. Yeah. What's her name? The princess now. Meghan. Yeah, it is Meghan. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Prince Harry is so fierce. Oh, anyway. So she's... Um, She's spoken also about her experience being in a mixed race um, family. And you can hear the confusion in her mind where she is, she doesn't know if she's black or white. She doesn't know um, where does she really fit in. Um, it took her a while to kind of find herself, where it's actually as parents your responsibility to create an environment for your child where they can feel safe no matter what um, color you are. They need to know that you two love each other, you love them, and that is the culture that we are trying to set at the moment. Because I want them to understand that I chose him because I love him. I had you because I love him. So. The thing is to understand that and kind of portray that for your children from both sides. I mean, you don't really always speak about stuff like this. Um, it, your day-to-day -day life becomes so busy. I mean, you having two kids, literally one year apart, having to work every day. He works, he's so hard. I mean you don't really have time to sit and say, okay, this is the system we have. You have to do this, 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 this. You go as, you go, as, you, as the day goes. You, you go as the year goes. It's like, okay, so this doesn't work. Okay, d don't do that again. Let's do this again. Okay, um, no, no, that's not working. So let's try this. So it's something, raising children is not, uh, it's not easy, but yeah. I can't really, if you have someone that can really Im impact, have an impact in your life, you can maybe set a culture beforehand. But if you don't have that like we do, you, mm. you do by yeah, trial and error. For, for example, um, let's say we, we get into a, a argument and we we start buttressing each other the whole time. Um, if we go to a counsellor for counselling, I mean, who do you go to? Because um, we've seen people that, um, since we got married or so on, I haven't been to a, a black counsellor <laughs> before that. And it, it becomes a sensitive thing in the long run. Um, not to say that whenever you go to a counsellor you are in trouble or whatever or a, a psychologist or a whoever that's going to help you guys with your relationship but um, it becomes difficult um, because sometimes you know this guy gives his own opinion or this lady gives her own opinion about mm -hmm. marriage or this one but you see it, it becomes difficult because they they say it from a different point of view. They don't understand mm -hmm. the what are picture. the implications or the whole picture, what you are going through. So that's one thing also that that plays a role in regards to um, to how you see things. I mean, that's just an example that I that I just mentioned. <laughs> that's a massive one. <laughs> that's a massive one. I think but if no. we're going to be honest, yes. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? <laughs> I said no, she said yes. <laughs> yeah, you said yes. Yeah. That's no, look, um, once again, it, it's, 
it, it's easier <laughs> for her to say it. Um, it's easier for for you to say it in a way that it it it, it, it is something that is achievable. But I can tell you honestly, if you can't pick up responsibility for whatever, or uh, uh, certain people will say, if you can't keep the faith, then don't even bother. Mm -hmm. Don't even, don't even waste your time because it, it it's not a fashion. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. That's important. It, 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 yes, because it's easy yes, for her to say, uh, yes, do it. I mean, nah. <laughs> no, you can't. Chemicals, I said, believe chemicals. Um, because it was just a yes from it was an easy yes. <laughs> it was like yes. I mean, because you, you have Jordana, <laughs> you have what? But I mean, if you get to a point where you don't have to put on sunscreen, I mean, it 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 it, it becomes die. I mean, but if 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 you can't keep the faith, don't even play with that fire. Um, it, 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 it will crush you because you have to get to a point where you are willing, it, it, it has to be a calling. Yeah. It has to be something yeah, that is divine, that something that is, and I'm, I'm not saying this is normal. I mean, we, 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 we know this is not normal. I mean, we see it everywhere we go, but if, if, if you haven't sat down and 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 being honest with you because I've come to a point where I said doesn't matter what's what's gonna happen is I mean the whole world can give me the most ruthless of opinions and how they feel about me or us mm -hmm. or what they think. But you know I said to her the other day um there's some games that you don't get to play um, that you get to leave. Mm. This game is, is you in, and you, you don't get to leave. And we've agreed to that, and I mean, you never know what the future might hold or so on, but um, I said, this is my type of, of faith. Mm. Yes, I'm gonna keep the faith. Um, I'm gonna run the race. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish the race, or whatever you might call it. But for someone, as you asked the question, for, for someone, would you promote this? Um, if it's not the divine, then no. No, <laughs> don't go there. Yeah, it can be good. But is it makkelijker to be able to do with the swarf, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's makkelijker geweest. Yeah, I can't answer that. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. I think can't I think marriage that. marriage is very difficult. I think if you're black, white, coloured, Indian, whatever, marriage is difficult. Um, the thing is just with us, like you said, it's a faith thing. You can't go into this and think, yeah, no, I look like Kim Kardashian and what's his, that guy's name? Oh, yeah. Guy. <laughs> I'm joking, Kanye yeah, West. Kanye, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so it's, it's not a fashion thing. It's not a thing that you try or experiment with. It's not, and especially don't have kids if you think you're just trying this out. Because I, I believe you, you put that child in a, in a um, situation that's unfair. They didn't ask to be here. And um, you, if you choose this, you work at it every day. You choose it. And you choose to lay down your life more than anything else. And um, yeah, and you can't do this without God. You you can't mm -hmm. do this. We've tried it. <laughs> yes, yes. We've tried. <laughs> We've tried to not go to church. We've tried not to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's actually to a, be hard. 
it's, it's actually a very yeah, important but you can't do thing this. that you that you touch there. But I think think marriage overall you can't. Yeah. You see, that's what she does the whole time, and she just wants to see the level of my <laughs> of my answer. Well, the lowest moment is is actually the recent, the most recent one. Um, you see, you, you can't just always go to the, the the most past challenges that you've gone through. But the most recent one is when we when we lost our our um, nanny um, in in the way that it happened, mm. it was brutal. I mean, the husband um, mm. murdered the wife, and then he committed suicide, or so on. And it was both people that worked for us, and both of them were working for us, and. The whole family of, like the whole support structure of my wife, um, said the following. He said, "But you, you know, it, it's what they are capable of." And my wife kept it in. Like she, she never came to me and said to me, "Listen, this is what every white person is saying to me." that it's a normal thing. And two weeks or three weeks later, we get into a, oh. a dispute. And then she throws that word that says, are you going to, to do the same to me? And I ask, but why would you say that? Um, uh, how many people have been saying that to you? And she says, everywhere where I looked for help, Everywhere where I wanted some sort of support from them, mm. um, they said, but it's a normal thing to do. And that was one of the lowest points in my marriage. Um, but one of the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it for your work? Yeah. Yeah. One of the best ones, um, yes, we. Um, there's actually two. The first one is um, every time when we, well, in fact, when we when we paint the house, when we do stuff together at home, um, it's always one of my best mm. moments um, in in our marriage. Um, whenever we we engage and we forget for a moment. And that moment doesn't come a lot. <laughs> um, but it's a moment where you forget that you are black or you forget that you are white and yeah. you just... Enjoy each other. You're just there, man. I mean, that's, mm. that's, that's always one of the most highlighted moments in, in, in my marriage. And the other one is... Um, yeah, highest moment. I don't know, good me, but... But yeah, no kidding. But I get by. For example, I'm on a Saturday when she's not working. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> then then we zone in, man. It's, 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 it's nice. And so there's 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 a lot of, of of nice moments and highlighting moments that we have, and we try to pay careful attention to those moments um, and try to understand how did we get there, yeah. and how do we actually to stay yeah, there I think for longer for me like the the highest <laughs> highest moment um i think it was benjamin's birth <laughs> yes that was <laughs> the most funny experience i've ever had in my marriage <laughs> like it's just i think we will laugh about that story for the rest of our lives so a quick yes. one so we, we didn't have done this in the middle, yeah. no, it's it's it's, it's chill, man. It's a it's a good moment because <laughs> he's giving me a big time now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Ariella is just born, and it is actually she's three months old, and we were supposed to get a Mariana um, <laughs> to make sure that <laughs> to make sure that. Um, 
that I don't um, fall she fall doesn't pregnant. Give fall pregnant and so on. And well, the Mariela was a bit expensive during that time, <laughs> but uh, so now we said, listen, let's go get an injection at least for the time being. And now <laughs> we literally bought the injection the Saturday. <laughs> the Saturday we bought it. We wanted to go do the injection by her dad. On Monday. <laughs> on Monday. We actually bought the injection that Saturday behind the practice of her dad. And her dad was actually there, but he just had some clients to see. The Sunday it happened, the Monday the <laughs> the boy was there. And it was too late. So yeah, that, <laughs> that's actually one of the... Yeah, that was funny. But... Yeah. It was not so snug for a while. No, it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny, but I mean... It was his birthday today. You, were, you didn't believe me that I was in, in labor. Like, you literally didn't believe me. I, I was in labor for two hours on my own. And then he still well, wanted to... Yeah, and then he wanted to go quickly, go fetch something first at my mom's house. But I was already nine centimeters when I did. <laughs> so just to give it an idea... <laughs> If I drove to her mom's place, ne, the baby would have been born in the car. <laughs> because as soon as we drove into the hospital, we quickly went to the, I think it's the first floor. Yeah, yeah, second floor. Second floor, and then she said that the ladies did their stuff, and the doctor walked in and Benjamin jumped out. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the... Yeah, that was funny. But yeah, I think that's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think um, the first one is people tend to think we we wanted to do this to get attention, mm. or we wanted to do this to test it out, mm. or we wanted to do this to be accepted in the world with our flaws, even though your flaws can be as hidden as much as you can, but you're using this just to hide actually who you are. And that's not actually the truth of the matter. The truth is, and I don't want to sound romantic about it, or emotional about it, or whatever. The truth is, if you get to a point where you have to choose between your ministry and your wife and you are a 21 year old boy who has no stable income or whatever and you get to a point where you say you cannot no longer hide this specific mutual feeling that you have for this other person then you're not allowed to judge at all if you have no idea how it felt like. Mm. Because many people tend to find a quick reason of why well, can it be wrong. Mm. But if, if, if people can just take a moment and not feel sad or whatever, but take a moment to understand how come it happened and how come it's still standing, mm. it, 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 it will be something that is that is that will change many people's minds and so on because it is not a racial issue is not something that can be based on our relationship and what we've experienced for the last nine years um, since we've known each other is a racial issue is not something that is easily fixable um, because you cannot hide it it is, is it, it is in plain sight. Until you, you get to a point where you get to understand what are the most cynical, stupid, dumb reasons why these people ended up together. Um, and you get a mind that is willing to, to give an, just a little bit of a ear mm. of understanding will give you a totally different view of it and we, we've got to a point where 
you don't have to feel accepted by any person in the world to feel that we love each other. Mm. Um, it is something that we we decided we're going to birth itself between us. And the moment you realize that, is the moment you realize that racism is is actually a a, a, a mental state mm. that through repeated conditioning of the right way to think mm. there's hope that it might go away it it, it 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 might but it's a it's a system that that you cannot just easily get rid of mm. but we won't we weren't planning to we we just went into this because of love mm. and yeah I think um, another misconception that people have is that, <laughs> I hear it a lot, where um, you go into the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I cannot speak for other interracial couples. Um, there are people that have been hurt um, by family that feel that they need to prove a point or whatever but specifically for us um, it was definitely just the love thing and um, I loved him as a person not because of his color not because of his culture um, about nothing just him as a person the way he made me feel made me feel safe and um, so and the, the most important thing is you cannot look at an interracial couple and judge without knowing their story. Because, but I, I think that's not just the interracial couple. I think it's any person that seems different, um, that's out of the, the normal. normal idea of living. And... Um, you cannot judge them because you, you're not in their shoes. You don't know how I felt every time I drove into the gates of the campus. You have no idea um, every time uh, I went to him for some comfort and the way he made me felt, feel, and still today. So, um, and that's something that's a huge part of my testimony as well, if I can quickly share that with you. Um, is I was sitting one day and um, my parents were having a fight in the house and I went outside and I sat outside and um, I sat there and I said to God that if this is the idea of a perfect picture I would not I don't want a perfect picture um, I want everything that, according to people, is not going to work. But I want to do it because I want God's glory to shine through it, to show that through God's love and through His faith, through faith through Him, you can do this. And if you love the person so much, you can do anything. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. And it's going to be an everyday choice. But I never knew what I prayed that day. <laughs> I never knew. And um, the day I met, uh, we actually, we fasted before we decided to be together. When we decided we're going to go out into the public, we were... Hidden for a while. <laughs> mm, <the> hidden gem. <laughs> yeah. And um, when I fasted, God reminded me of that prayer. And I actually laughed because I was like, okay, <laughs> so what you actually pray is actually going to happen. Um, so, yeah, that um, is something that's a huge part of my life. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I don't. I'll, I'll do it again. There's a lot of words 
that you regret. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I'll. The decisions we made never. No, I, I don't regret this. I don't. I think the biggest thing is um, is don't assume. Don't don't just look at them and assume whatever you think. Um, I think it's rather a very big thing to actually get into contact with a couple um, and hear their story because I think if I if I think and um, tell my story to people the the amazing um, that means that um, impact, impact that it, that it has on on um, in people's lives. Um, it's an amazing testimony. It's um, it's not easy. I mean, whatever. But we we've covered that now all of along. But it's just don't don't just look at me and judge me. Don't, don't look at me and become angry at me. Um, social media is a big problem. And um, we've had a few things where people have attacked us and commented on photos of us and things like that. But it's just... I understand you have your say. I understand you have... You are more than entitled to have your say. But don't judge me if you don't know my story. And um, I think that's my biggest thing that I wish people would know. And also that don't look at an interracial child and blame them. It's, I think, they are just beautiful kids. They are all just children. And every child on this planet needs to be loved, whether they are black or white or mixed, it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, I think that's my biggest thing that I wish people would know and think about. Yeah. yeah um, well, mine is, it's actually very simple, is the conversation that we might have today cannot be the same conversation that we might have in five years. And I'm actually excited to see where we would be, where would we be in in five years time or ten years time or twenty years time. Because if you can keep the faith, mm. if you can bear your cross, if you can call it that, um, if you can pick up your responsibility, it doesn't matter in which skin color you've been thrown into. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor or whatever. If you do those stuff, I, I, I guarantee you, you will continue to have a different story. And that is our story, is, is we actually always looking for that ideal couple. And maybe we might not see it. Uh, and there's a video that we like to, or I like to, to watch on, on maybe TikTok or YouTube that says, um, Maybe not today, and maybe not tomorrow, but one day we will be champions. And it might sound like a cliche or whatever, mm. but I mean, it, it, that's our biggest um, desire that we have for us specifically to say, it, it is, it's not, not, not to judge it based on today, not to judge it based on where it is now, but what is the the intended intention of of the whole idea of 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 of, of a relationship or 
or what you what you think you want to start or what you actually where you want to see yourself if you want to embark in a journey that has different cultures involved and so on mm. but yeah that's my piece of of mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah Buddha you know it, it it this is just actually the last thing that I would just want to throw in the if you can maybe edit it and put it on the 14th minute <laughs> and 27th <laughs> no? <laughs> is um, you know the one thing that I constantly ask myself about is how come specifically this woman um, could I have made a decision to say I'm willing to risk it all to spend the rest of my life with this woman irregardless of her skin color and the only thing that I can come up on is is is, is, is faith mm -hmm. because you never know I don't know how she's going to be in five years time I don't know how I'm going to be in two years time but the same woman I made a decision to say I will keep the faith that's the biggest movement or the biggest way to look at it is to understand okay this decision that I take today if you're willing to make that decision because I will make that decision again but if you're willing to make the decision realize that it's it's the it's the biggest form of faith that one can do because you you, you have no idea how she's going to be or how I'm going to be in three years time or five years time or ten years time but I made a decision let's say six years ago to say this is what I wanted this is what I'm going to go for and a piece of advice for let's say uh, a young mm, couple or whatever is uh, people are starting to run away from marriage because it seems like it's the most difficult thing that you can find and it is something that is not easily manageable because you want a piece of that, you want a piece of that, you want to be part of the whole thing. But I can guarantee you if you want to see a move of faith is to make a decision and stick to it for the rest of your life. And that's one of the most beautiful things that a person can do. Because I'm a true supporter of marriage. I, I don't want to sound a romantic, <laughs> but it is one thing that if you say you put your mind to it, you run with it until, until the end. And yeah, cover a rock, rock, rock. Thank you, Buddha.